Welcome to the NGL Back to Basics. Five months ago in Birmingham, we came together and decided to focus on the human-to-human -human interaction during the visitor journey. We saw during this visitor journey, there were four different touch points which we will be talking about today. Registration, experience, matchmaking, and hospitality. Indeed, that was a great experience. So we exchange, learn, and exchange the culture as well. So join us, the visitor's journey. And our journey will start with the first touch point, which is going to be the registration. Laura, stage is yours. Thank you, Fuad. Good morning, everybody. Do you remember the registration process for events you have been to? What is easy? What is efficient? What is quick? What kind of information were you asked for? And the most important thing, how did you feel? Does the video ring any bells? Do you think that in the digital era, other ways are possible? One of the most important touch points during the visitor journey of an event is the registration process. It should be a seamless experience for our customers, but it very often isn't. Trade fair organizations collect a lot of data from our clients, but in most cases, our real knowledge of them is very poor. The evolution of our business will be defined by the constant improvement in our knowledge of our customers. And why is this important? Because if we know who our customers are, what their needs, their interests, and their expectations are, and we are capable of adapt adapting our offer, we will have loyal customers, followers, believers, ambassadors. I would like to share with you some ideas on how to improve and optimize the registration process, how to make the process easier, how to get real data, how to get information without asking a lot of questions, and how to improve communication with our customers. The first idea is social logging. Social logging uses data from social media networks, such as LinkedIn, and has a lot of advantages. It is quick. The customer only has to click on the social media button and the data automatically transfers to the registration process. It is easy. Users don't need to remember different usernames and passwords. And it is reliable. Professional networks act as online business cards at in it is in the user's interest to make sure the information is accurate and up-to-date. The second way of getting professional data from our customers without asking too many questions is by using the information available in public registers online. For example, if we know the name of the company, we can find out the turnover or the number of employees or if the company belongs a trade association or a chamber of commerce. And, and this is very important. This information is real and verifiable. Any further information that organizer needs can be asked for in a simple way, directly. The customer is much more likely to answer if they haven't had to spend a lot of time answering other more basic questions. And finally, a large amount <clears throat> of information can be obtained from tracking visitors during events. Where do they go? What stands do they visit? Who do they meet? And what restaurants do they eat in? So, what are the advantages for trade fairs of improving the registration process and of compiling lots of data? One advantage 
is that organizers can prioritize the purchase moment. If we ask customers to manually input a lot of data, they may abandon or the registration process because feel frustrated. The quicker the customer arrives at the moment of purchase, the less likely that accreditation will be abandoned or delayed. Another major advantage is that the information about visitors in organizations' databases is real, not fake. For various reasons, when registering, sometimes people use false information <coughs> by using external sources that can be avoided. If the process is easier and more seamless, organizations can ask and collect more information about the individual needs and interests of their clients. With this information, we can advance from general segmentation, like for example, country or size of company or job title, to much more personal segmentation based on interests, needs, or professional profile. Organizations can then improve visitor experience during events. For example, organizers can recommend exhibitors speakers, and even restaurants to customers. They can also match people each other, creating a personal experience of them. Thank you. And after registering, the visitor has arrived, and Cynthia is ready for the show. So, how are you feeling? A little lost? Rose, 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 <laughs> rose. <laughs> no, that was yesterday. <laughs> Katie, where are you? I can hear you, but I can see you. I'm right here. Cool, now I feel better. But the rest of the NGLs, where are you? We are here. Yeah. When visitors enter an exhibition for the first time, they feel lost. They don't know where to go. They need interactions. They need connections. So please take your smartphones, turn on your torches, and help me find my way. Perfect. Now it's better. I feel better. <laughs> Let's wave with me. I need to know where are you? AV team, you can join us as well if you want to. <laughs> Welcome to the experience session. When people ask me what is my job, I usually answer with this image. I'm Lucy, by the way, not the customer of Lucy. In truth, my job is to help coordinating young students that want to become one day exhibition and event managers. I really love my job because I'm always up to date with the newest trends since they are always 23 years old. The, on the other side, I started 20, when I was 23 years old, and my age is flying. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Every year for the Global Exhibitions Day, I ask my students to help me. I collected more than 120 answers because I ask them every year to write a sentence on why do they love exhibitions. And I found out with my colleagues that they love exhibitions because they love unique shared experiences with international communities. But this is nothing new. We have always loved shared experiences and we will always do it. 
The only thing that has changed is the way we share experiences. And we also have new formats. Please raise your hands if you know Fortnite. OK. Some of you have teenagers I, in, in the house, I guess. Fortnite now is the biggest, the most popular video game. And at the beginning of this year, Fortnite had a live concert. Yes, a live concert within the video game. And it broke all records. Up to that day, the biggest concert ever had 3.5 million people attending. Fortnite had 10.7 million, and their average age was 16 years old. But what is experience? We've been talking about experience at least for 20 years. The first time in 1998, a Harvard paper, wore, the authors wrote about the experience economy. And they said that as goods and services are being commoditized, companies need to do experiences in order to thrive in the new economy. 20 years later, the same authors wrote a new paper, The Experience Economy Past, Present, and Future. And they stated that all those companies that in the last 20 years haven't staged experiences, they are dead now. But now we are facing a new crucial moment because experiences are being commoditized. How many times we have said, been there, done that, yeah, it was nice, but a bit boring, nothing new. Now, companies need to guide transformation in order to become relevant in the new economy. We need to be relevant for the needs of our customers. And that is why all the touch points that we are touching today, from registration, experience, matchmaking, and hospitality, they are crucial in order to thrive in the transformation economy. And the paper concludes that in the transformational economy, the customer is the product. I would like to give you an example from an industry that has always been the same for decades. And this is the car industry. For ages, cars have been just a mean of trans transportation. We wanted to move from point A to point B we own cars, and we are very proud of our cars. Lately, we are not owning cars anymore. We are renting them. And maybe we are even going beyond that. This summer, the Asahi Shimbun wrote an article about a rental car service company that noticed they had many customers, but they traveled no distance. They wanted to know more about that, and so they decided to do a survey. And what they found out is quite interesting. Their customers use cars to take naps, to work, to storage, and even to practice rapping. So I would like to see that. And what, does teaches, what, that, what this thing teaches us, that when we design products, services, and even experiences. We don't know how our customers are going to deal with it, how they're going to interact with them. So we have to constantly check on our customers. I would like to give you another example from art. Art used to be just paintings and walls. But now art is meeting tech and things got really interesting. Because now art is staging experiences, but not just any experience. They are memorable, unique experiences. And what makes an experience unique is interactions. So when you enter Team Lab Borderless, and you, when you interact with the exhibition, you affect positively, positively also 
the other people attending the exhibition. And this is what trade shows should look for. So in conclusion, how can exhibitions improve in the experience economy? Well, the most important thing is that we don't have to start from logistics. We have to start from questions, and not just any question, the right questions. So we no have to know our purpose. Each exhibition is different, and each exhibition needs to know what is the concept behind it, what is the purpose, what we want to do. Just to say we want to sell more, we want to connect more, it's not a purpose. But in order to know our purpose, we have to know our audience before. When we started this session, I wanted to see you, because you are my audience. And you also have to see your audience. Who are they? Why are they coming to an exhibition? How are they interacting with it? And if you want to know that audience that is coming, they are coming. They are arriving really fast. Those that play Fortnite and attend a live concert within a video game, you should ask the right people. So it's us, us on stage, but especially the young talents that you have in your companies. So this is the experience, but there is no experience without content, and content is king. Thank you. Bueller. Bueller. Not all of you may recognize this movie scene, but in my culture, it's an iconic moment from Ferris Bueller's Day Off, where Ferris has ditched school for the day to have an experience. And Ben Stein, the professor, continues to stand up at the front of the classroom saying Bueller in the most monotone voice of all time. This to me represents how content is presented at trade shows and conferences around the world. It's the equivalent of standing behind the lectern, scrolling through PowerPoint slides until the entire audience has fallen asleep. According to a recent study done by our friends at Explory, one of the questions asked of attendees is what would make shows more enjoyable? The number one answer, presentations and talks delivered in different ways. 42% of attendees are wanting content delivered to them in different ways. So what does this mean? Well, I don't know if it necessarily means strolling about the audience as if you're my best friends and not my potential future bosses. <laughs> totally kidding, Rick McConnell or Stephen Carter, if you heard that. <laughs> but what it does mean is that it's time for us to get off the stage and away from the PowerPoint. We need to make our audience feel something and experience something different. Silent disco talks. This format allows multiple speakers to speak within the same room at the same time. While attendees can choose who they want to listen to because they are equipped with wireless headphones. They can switch between, between channels in order to tune, tune into these different speakers. Attendees are able to enjoy bite-sized content and the information that they want to hear, ensuring that they're always listening to the speakers that interest them. Or what about the debate format? This format takes a central theme or question and has two speakers debate for or against. At the start, participants are polled to measure their opinion on this topic. Following the debate, they are polled again to see if they are now in favor or against. The winner of the debate is the one who managed to get the attendees to switch their votes. Talk about putting control back into your audience hands. Or what about including a soapbox? A soapbox at your event can provide attendees with a platform to have their ideas heard. Individuals can submit proposals to participate, and if they are chosen, they will be given a short time on stage to present an idea that is important to them. 
This is giving value back to your attendees and allowing them to participate in the talks rather than just being talked at. Each of these styles of presentations has one thing in common, experience. And it all goes back to the experience economy that Chinsia mentioned earlier. And as event organizers, it is vital to our industry. 73% of millennials believe that attending a live event is the best way to show other people what they're interested in. And yes, while millennials do rely heavily on technology, they believe that a face-to-face -face interaction is the key in promoting a positive change. In fact, three out of four agree that a live event trumps any type of digital interaction. While 72% of Gen Z, they want to communicate face-to-face -face because they want to see transparency, authenticity, and truthfulness, which are all easier to ascertain via face-to-face which all brings us back to the platform of trust. For those of you who participated in our thread board out in the coffee area, you may have noticed there are only two Generation Zs represented at this conference. This indicates a real issue. If you think millennials are changing the industry, Generation Z is right on our heels. The way we experience events, receive content, and meet face-to-face -face is not only being shaped by millennials, but also Generation Z. All of us up on this stage fall into, as some of you might see it, this dreaded millennial category. However, you might not have caught on that these millennials up here have actually been practicing what we're preaching to you all week. Between the post-its in the bathroom, the interactive thread board in the coffee area, or the chocolates encouraging you to introduce yourself to the person behind you. We tried to make a mark on this conference to show you what small touches can do to enhance the experience and to help build the face-to-face -face community of your event. After all, we're all just looking for an experience, aren't we? And if you don't believe me, just ask Ferris Bueller. Thank you, Katie. How about you go experience our back to basics bar for my part with the others? I'd be more than happy to. <laughs> Save me a drink. As Katie just pointed out, the importance of human to human interaction and face to face communication is still highly valued amongst millennials and younger generations alike. And this finding actually also correlates, there we go, actually also correlates with the question that we snuck into your registration process for this Congress. The majority of you indicated to prefer meeting an important new client in person rather than video chatting, initiating contact via social media, or writing a detailed email. So even though digital communication is often the most convenient method, evidence shows that face-to-face -face interaction is the most powerful way to achieve business goals, convince customers, and gain trust for all generations alike. So how can we, as trade show organizers, raise the prospects of our participants finding exactly who and what they are looking for at our shows? The answer, matchmaking. Okay. When talking about matchmaking, people immediately think of dating platforms. And some of these platforms actually have some very interesting approaches and are taking the dating experience to the next level. Not only do they provide a platform to meet and match, but they actually also set up a meeting at a, res at a selected restaurant according to both preferences for the first face-to-face -face meeting. They operate according to the motto, spend your time dating instead of searching. Shouldn't our motto be the same? Maybe not the dating part, but shouldn't our approach be spend your time networking instead of searching? To maximize the matchmaking experience, we need to facilitate the process by using and improving the technology that is already available as an enabler.
And this needs to be more than just a list of all trade show participants and their contact information. When looking at the platforms we currently use on a day-to-day -day basis, whether that's LinkedIn, Netflix, Amazon, YouTube, to name a few, they all give us recommendations on what to watch or buy, who to follow or connect with based um, on our past interactions, and the use of consumption patterns with the use of algorithms. And especially with the Generation Z not knowing it any other way, why should our matchmaking offering be any different? So how can we, as trade show organizers, support face-to-face -face meetings to enhance the matchmaking success at our shows? Well, firstly, we should provide a matchmaking platform, ideally in form of an app or a web app. Um, various providers already exist. However, this needs to be embedded into our communication strategy. As the participants have already provided their personal data when registering to our event, we should use this data to already prepare a basic profile. Their profile is only activated after answering three to four matchmaking questions with preset answers to choose from and multiple answers being possible. A programmed algorithm then calculates match percentages and the user immediately receives suggestions on who to contact and directly schedule one-to-one -one meetings with. This works because consumers, especially millennials and the Generation Z, are more and more willing to provide personal data for more personalized experiences. However, they do need to see the added value that this brings. For the highest level of effective matchmaking, we need to get all stakeholders involved. And we need to get all stakeholders to engage in this platform. And this needs to be encouraged by us on all levels. Besides connecting people to people, we should also connect people to content. Users should receive suggestions on relevant exhibitors, panels, and events going on as we know best what's going on in our shows. To encourage these meetings on site, we need to provide matchmaking lounges in convenient locations um, that are incorporated in the floor plan from the get-go, and not just because an exhibitor canceled last minute and we need to fill a gap. So what's the benefit for the users? The mindless search of potential prospects is eliminated, return on investment and return on time is created, and the foundations of a successful show are created before the show doors have even opened. And the benefit for us? Well, we receive detailed data on the number of social interactions made at our shows. And from the additional data that we receive, we can further improve the customer journey make more target-specific group offerings, and develop tailored services. For this, the compatibility between the app input and our CRM tools needs to be given, as that's where the data ends up on all ends. An interesting approach to make the matchmaking experience even more fun is offered by Click, a provider from Canada. Contact information is exchanged when holding the two badges together. And in my point, very convenient, because let's be honest, exchanging business cards is always a little bit of a hassle. And did I even bring enough business cards to this event? On top of that, the badge is even recyclable and reusable. To gamify the visit, points can be earned when fulfilling customized tasks such as engaging with sponsors, participants, or exhibitors, and attending workshops and events. By incorporating a navigating function, the pain point wayfinding can also be addressed and eliminated, with suggestions on relevant content being made along the way to the desired destination. So as you can see, many elements are exist and the possibilities are endless. Now it is our job to craft a matching strategy, preferably co-designed by our stakeholders, and function as matchmakers to enable 
more meaningful and high quality connections at our shows and create handshake moments or way moments as we are in Thailand after all. And now Fouad will continue our journey with his take on hospitality. Thank you, Carly. So let me start this by asking you a question. What do you mean by hospitality? Anyone? Thank God we are not in the lunch time, otherwise you'll be hating me. <laughs> Food, you're absolutely right. The image behind me represents the hospitality to the majority. But according to Webster's Dictionary, what's the hospitality? It's a treatment, it's activity, it's welcoming. According to what we believe, hospitality is a human element that leads all the activities under the hospitality. Where do we find the hospitality? Or in our line of business, where we find the hospitality, or we should we say, where we can find the hospitality? Let me share with you this um, example. When you're calling any call center or any registration desk, so the answering machine will reply to you, for language A, press one, for language B, press two, and so on. And we'll be waiting to hear that final line. If you would like to speak to someone, press nine, and then we got, yes, finally we're going to speak to a human. A human to human is very important. The human to human attraction is very important. It's starting from the first touch point, from the registration. Laura, you was absolutely right. The registration should be smooth, fast, and hospitable. When we walk, um, from any exhibition, conference, or event. What are you going to remember? The color of carpet or <clears throat> uh, a shape of uh, a coffee cup? But the majority will be remembering that person who is standing at the entrance and was absolutely unhelpful. The experience. The majority of us definitely will remember the experience regardless of where we are from and what language we speak. The hospitality is the universe language. So the experience, the experience is very important from first touch point, the second touch point that we arrive in any event. And as we see, we are here in Thailand, the great welcoming, the great hospitality, the great experience. From first day that we are attending this UFI conference, with the great people. And let me ask you a question. Uh, Seven, if I would like to introduce someone and that person has a keep away sign in his face or in, written in his whole body, would you be interested to meet that person? Me either. I'm not going to be interested to meet that person. The, the matchmaking it's very important to be hospitable. That person should be welcome. Welcome for connecting. Welcome for networking. So, if you can see the hospitality, the hospitality is very much important to all touch points, from the registration to the experience to matchmaking. How are we going to show the hospitality? A lot of exhibitors invest huge investment in a huge stand, beautiful stand, state of art. But when you walk in, there is no one attending you, no one welcoming you. It's like a ghost city. So, but other hand, the successful exhibitors, they invest in both. They invest in technology, and they invest in human resources where they train their people to be more hospitable, to be more welcome, and end of the day, 
happy visitors are potential business. If you are looking for a perfect tool to have a successful event, show, exhibition, look no, look no further. The hospitality is your answer. People will not remember the delicious canopy that you will serve, but definitely they will remember the person that you invest on, the person who delivering that great experience. The art of promoting any product or service is integrating the hospitality to your marketing. Back to basic. Thank you. Thank you, Fuad. Well, what a ride. This is the end of our presentation, but the journey has just begun. Our journey started many months ago, though. We started after Birmingham. We asked you a question during the registration process. And we created FOMO. We created an official hashtag, and we did tweets and posts. We also, during these days, interacted with you. We wanted to show you how data can be fun and also a bit complicated, especially when the thread breaks. Uh, during the coffee breaks, we also gave you sweets to remind you that hospitality is really important. And we followed you everywhere, like literally everywhere, even the bathrooms. <laughs> but that's not just it. We also created a brand. We, each color has a meaning. We became graphic designers for you and also fashion stylists. <laughs> But there's a meaning to all of that. We are not just your stalkers. We just wanted to show you, and not just to tell you, that human interaction is really important to us. At this point, we would like to send a great shout out to my colleagues at Deutsche Messe from the Digital Transformation Team for their great and inspiring threadboard idea that we kind of wanted to show you at this point at the event. So have a big round of applause for them in Hanover. We also want to take, use this moment to say Kap Hun to Kun to Ufi and especially Angela and Eleonora back. Where is he? Right there. Uh, For your amazing support and thank you to our sponsor Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> for making this whole experience possible. Very thank you, thank you, thank you. Our last question on the thread board. And sorry, Kai, we took a picture of you because <laughs> it just looks great. Um, it's 2025. Did you help shape the future of trade shows? And the majority of you said yes, with the others saying, I hope so. So the ambition is there. Now it's up to all of us. And as a reminder of this commitment, we invite you to take some of our little pins that will be at the exits um, when leaving this room as a reminder. Remember, the best coffee is the one you share. Let's talk. <laughs>